Hello my beauties, welcome to another edition of my makeup rules and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about mineral makeup. As usual, without further ado, let's go straight into the history of mineral makeup. Mineral makeup was probably most well known in the 1970s in San Francisco by a lady named Diane Ranger. She was a lady that, that started Bare Essentials in 1976 and Color Science and Color Science Pro. So her idea of why she wanted to start a mineral makeup was the fact that she wanted to find something natural that anyone and everyone could use people who especially with sensitive skin. It was also around the 1976 where a lot of the makeup industry was made it mandatory for you to have the list of ingredients that you had in the makeup. So that was when she discovered that there were so many junk or toxins or like ingredients that were in the makeup that you didn't necessarily need and was gonna actually do more damage to your skin than good. She wanted to make something for women that was essentially the basics of makeup and that was also going to give you coverage as well as good skin health. In 1994, Jane Arundel was also someone very well known in the mineral makeup industry. Her story was that she discovered that a lot of like models and actors and actresses had to wear all this makeup on their skin for camera and it was doing so much damage to the skin that you know people people were breaking out there were a lot of like problems and she wanted to create something that was not only going to give you good coverage give you the all of the effects that makeup would give you but also at the same time focusing on the health of the skin by removing all of the bad ingredients and just keeping what's um, the essentials and that's how her line of mineral makeup came about she's also got um, not only just mineral foundations but concealers eyeshadows blushes and the list goes on however I have to stress that ancient Egyptians have known to use mineral makeup a long time ago. So back in BC, um, they've actually uh, been known to crush, you know, gemstones or um, minerals and things like that to actually apply them onto their faces as either like paint for religious reasons or sometimes even like army paint for like before going to war or battle. So mineral makeup is not something new to the society. Mineral makeup has actually been around for such a long time. What is mineral makeup? Pretty much mineral makeup is grounded mineral into powder and then you apply that to the skin. So there are some basic ingredients that you need in the foundation or in the mineral makeup and that includes titanium dioxide, bismuth oxychloride, kaolin clay, zinc oxide, um, sericite, talc, mica and other minerals as well. So basically zinc oxide and titanium oxide are very well known for the sunscreen protective properties. So these are very often used in makeup, whether it's actually um, mineral makeup or other makeup, That those ingredients are always in there if you want some sort of SPF protection. Bismuth oxychloride is something that helps to reflect the light, so it gives you the illusion of having brighter or a smoother skin. Kaolin clay is very often used in um, foundations that are going to tell you that it's good for breakouts or are going to reduce the acne. What the clay does is actually it draws out the toxins and oils in the skin. It helps to draw out impurities and fat. It also helps to refine the pores and then therefore reduces the acne. Zinc oxide is also known for this anti-inflammatory um, properties so if you do have sensitive skin or if you do if you or if you are suffering from acne breakouts that will actually help to control the inflamedness of it that's why a lot of times mineral makeup is marketed for people who have problematic skin or who have acne breakouts so sericite is actually something that helps to reflect the light at the same time it minimizes the appearance of pores and wrinkles so a lot of times mineral makeup is marketed to be anti-aging it marketed it's marketed to be this one the powder that does everything for your skin. Both talc and mica are like fine particles that makes the product feel silky and smooth on the skin so it's easier to apply and it's easier to go on as well as it looks really nice on the skin as well. So therefore other minerals and other dyes are added into the formula to change or alter the um, color or the consistency. There's a process where they actually crush all of these minerals. Um, it goes into a micronized level. So the micronized level is how fine the powder is or, or the minerals is crushed into. The smaller the particle, the higher the coverage. So sometimes there might be mineral powder that will give you light to medium coverage. When it's more micronized, it'll give you medium to high coverage. 
So mineral makeup comes in various form and textures as well. Um, nowadays, you can get mineral makeup in foundation liquid, cream, um, powder. You can get eyeshadows that's loose um, or pressed. You can get blushes, lipsticks, and the list goes on. However, the most well-known and I guess the most iconic is the mineral powder. That That's usually how you would apply it. It usually comes in like a little tin or a little jar that has holes on the top. You pour some of the powder onto the lid and then you use a kabuki or a fat round brush. You actually swirl the brush into the pan or mix up the product and then you buff it into the skin. By actually buffing into skin, you're, you're probably spreading the micronized particles all over your face as fine as possible, which means it creates that flawless look for you. Now, how the powder is then converted to a liquid or a cream form is by the process that it goes through. A lot of the times, these particles will be light or heat treated to change or alter the shade. So therefore, in the past, a lot of the mineral makeup have very few shades. But nowadays, with new technology, they're able to create more shades and more variations for you. But at the same time, when you change or alter the texture from a powder to a liquid, there are always going to be additional products or additional ingredients that goes into the product, which can then alternate the results or the effect that you wanted from mineral makeup in general. Traditional makeup a lot of times have additional ingredients like fragrances, emollient oils, waxes, preservatives, waterproof polymers. These are all um, going to basically make the foundation last longer, smell better, probably apply easier, but mineral makeup don't have these additional ingredients, which means they don't last as long on the skin as if you were to wear a traditional makeup. Because of the process the mineral makeup goes in, you are limited to, to fewer shades than if you were to go for traditional makeup. But the benefits of having the mineral makeup is that they're gonna have less ingredients that are more likely to clog your pores. But that goes without saying because it doesn't matter if you're wearing mineral makeup or makeup in general, you should always remember to cleanse and wash your face at the end of the day. My tips on how to choose the right mineral makeup is always read the label. Sometimes a lot of the makeup can claim that it's mineral enriched. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually a mineral makeup. I'll always suggest to use a mineral powder versus a mineral liquid because the mineral powder is going back to basic. It's going back to what it's originally made out, out of and it's going to give you the best results. Um, I often just use mineral makeup um, alone when I'm not wearing a ton of foundation. In fact, I either wear no makeup or if I have to, I would wear a little bit of mineral makeup all over my face just to even out the skin tone a little bit. Just because there's zinc in the mineral makeup doesn't mean that you shouldn't wear sunscreen. It doesn't matter if you are going to wear an SPF um, foundation or mineral makeup on top, you should always wear sunscreen underneath. And at the same time, when mineral makeup um, advertises to be acne friendly or that it's going to reduce the um, your breakouts and things like that it's only going to play a small role in clearing up your skin because your skincare routine starts from the inside it starts from your diet your lifestyle what you apply your cleansing process your moisturizers and then your makeup so it's only going to be a little part of your whole process so don't think that just because you're wearing mineral makeup you, your acne is going to go away and my last tip is obviously try 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 I have tried so many mineral makeup. I've tried whether it was a cushion makeup, whether it's a liquid, whether it's foundation powder, pressed powder, loose powder. I've tried all sorts. You really do need to try them on your skin to really feel which texture or which product is best for you. A lot of the times you might find that one formula works better um, or is longer lasting than the other formula or this color will oxidize better on your skin as opposed to the other one. So you, you definitely need to try them out and figure out what you like. I also have different mineral makeup for different occasion. You might have one for a very light dusting or you might have one for full high coverage. You might have one for summer or might have one for winter. So definitely go out there and try it um, on your skin. Okay, so that's it. If you have any other questions about mineral makeup, leave your comments below. Actually, I'm really curious to know what is your favorite mineral makeup. There are so many brands out there. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a lovely week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.